Hello, this is a short film about uh, ways in which you can create a website that you can submit as coursework. Either the website serves as the coursework itself or maybe it's just there to house some um, text which is submitted as your coursework. There are many ways in which you can create a website. Popular methods include WordPress, Google and this short video is going to focus on Weebly mainly because it's really simple to use and you'll see once we get into the um, the main section it's really easy to edit and it looks fantastic for the amount of editing that's required. If you want to use a different website for your um, submission then um, check out the guidelines but this should also be okay as well. So in Weebly you need to go to weebly.com and I'm already inside it at the moment because we're already registered but if you go to weebly.com and then sign in with your email address and then very quickly you'll get to a point where it offers you a selection of sites to add. So once you've got this page you can um, choose one of these three selections. I would suggest one of these two, the site or the blog. They both allow you to have the same sort of options once you're inside although the focus is changed slightly from a site or a blog. So once um, at the choosing a theme section you'll see there's a, there's a large selection of really nice looking themes um, and they'll keep scrolling down and down and down and we're just going to choose the first one that comes to us. Uh, don't stress too much about choosing at this stage because once you're um, editing your website you can go back and change the theme quite easily. So the next thing it will ask you for is to choose your website domain. Now if you've already got a domain name then you can um, link it with your existing one that you might have bought. We can also register a new one uh, or buy a new one and for the free option we're just going to go into this top section and we're going to call it what we want. and we're going to continue. Okay so now we're actually inside and we're able to edit. Um, at the top you look on the ribbon you have build, we have design and pages. The main two we want to look for are build and design and we're already in build. All we need to do now is scroll down to the empty section and it is as simple as dragging and dropping the type of content that you would like to add to the page. So from this point onwards, it's really more a matter of design and content rather than technical knowledge. We have a really nice feature here, which is columns on the left. So if we add that, and you can see where the blue line is, that's where it's actually going to go. So don't worry about where the blue blocks box is, but where the blue line is, that's where it's going to sit. So I've just put in some columns. We can change that to three columns if you like. And then I can drag in some text, and you'll see the blue line either sits right across the page or within the columns. And that folks is pretty much all you need to know. We have images, slideshows, a gallery, contact forms, dividers should you need them. We can put in YouTube videos, we can add files and documents which give a slightly different angle. If you have anything um, different like a Twitter feed then you can use the embed code as well to put them in. So really it's about design and content from this point onwards. If we go to pages at the top of the ribbon, we can then start to add pages and change the style of pages. So if I wanted to add a page, I'll go to the top where it says add page. We can make it a blog if we want at this point, which is the difference between a standard page and a blog. We'll give it a name, imaginative name there, web page one. We save and edit. and there we go there is a new page we can change the size of this by going back into pages and we'll just make that a no header page save and edit and there we go and again we can just mess around with that at the top there you see that web page one came up onto my main page my um, my main ribbon and um, so I can go back into pages and if I drag that across save and edit and now you'll see that that's disappeared and that folks is pretty much all we need to know about creating a Weebly so apart from that though the only thing that's left is to publish the website so at the moment we're still in the Weebly editing site so if I go to the top right hand side 
So at the moment this is not online, but if I publish and continue, you'll see the website there now. So it's asking us to categorize it. We oh, don't need to too much time there. And the website is now being published online. You can see it's already there. We are gonna, we can press this button here and it will take us to the website. So now when I'm tending to edit them, I'll keep two open. I'll keep my Weebly editing site open and then I'll keep my published website open. Now this is online. You now have a website. So now we've looked at the technicalities of the website. I think we should spend a little bit of time looking at the, the way that we can use this as an assessment. It's really important that you look at the set criteria and content for your particular assessment and ensure you follow the guidelines. Um, for the written elements, you need to be cautious about your written style. Um, as it's, if it's to be assessed, then it needs appropriate underpinning evidence. So don't get lured into writing a simple blog off the top of your head. You need to be writing academically. And whilst you can probably get away with using the first and second person occasionally and very carefully, if you're in any doubt at all, then you need to write an academic piece of writing um, with references in text and at the end of text. And I've got some good examples here, good examples, two of my examples. So if you go to my website, benjamefitness.com, and search for high intensity interval training, you'll find an article that looks like this. It's got references in, not Marjon style, so you need to stick to Marjon style. But this is an example of a short piece of writing which has an awful lot of references. So don't feel that by writing a thousand words or whatever your brief is that you can't write academically. Again, if you go to my website and look for sugar versus fat, is it personal? You'll see another article with not so many references, but you'll see the use of pictures alongside the text and the use of hyperlinks within the text is a different feature that we can add to our writing. Similarly, if I bring your attention to Nick Grantham's website, which although hasn't had much on there for a little while, has got a really good article um, on hypoxic training uh, with excellent use of references and in a blog style, but a very strong academic underpinning. And finally, if I bring your attention to activechoices.weebly.com, another website of ours, you'll see this is a page we use with some of our cancer clients and not quite so strong academically because it's not written for an assessment, but you'll see here how we've got text We've got references at the bottom with hyperlinks and then also we can use the web page um, as a canvas to add in columns and we can add in supplementary information. So whilst we're being graded um, on the text, we can actually make it more of a website and, and, and if we're being graded on the web content, then that will get us extra marks. So that's it really, a short video just trying to um, inspire you and look at some of the technicalities of producing a website and please look at the brief for your particular module and that particular assessment it may be such that you are using different websites um, and it might also be that you need to submit work um, in the more regular paper format to the office as well so please look at your guidelines look at the guidelines for style but um, enjoy the task and the reason that we do these tasks is because they can take you forwards beyond the remit of university and they're really good skills for creating your own website and having an online presence which, which is becoming more and more essential. Um, so thank you very much.